Hello everybody and welcome back to Sound of Drop. So it dropped us right back here at this choice. So even though I thought it was obvious for us to run, it clearly isn't the case. So I guess we're gonna not move, I guess? No, I can't think of anything. I'm becoming panicked. If I don't calm down with my thoughts swirling around so frantically, I'm getting even more confused. It's a vicious cycle. My sandals are getting dirty. It isn't the first thing that occurs to me, but regardless, it's my only clear thought. The puddles of water are gradually drawing closer, and I can't feel anything from the strange jellyfish. I feel my heartbeat speed up as my chest starts to hurt from nervousness. Oh. At this point, I have to run through without worrying about my sandals. Though they are sandals, the soles are strong. As long as the jellyfish don't jump, I probably won't get stung. Little by little, the safe spots are disappearing. I tightly pull my legs together, which makes me stagger. <sighs> I let out a small scream and straighten up a bit. With nothing behind me to lean against, I'm just about cornered. I wonder if I'll die of jellyfish poison. Rocked by waves of blended nervousness and fear, I carelessly entertain that line of thinking. The meter gauging my fear must be in full tilt, I think, with cool self-deprecation. Ew, from earlier. H huh? Oh, that guy. The sudden yell confuses me. Upon looking in the direction of the voice, I see that the door has been thrown open and a man is standing there. Shoot, why are your feet exposed? Ah, uh, can't be helped. That is definitely Hiyoshi-san. Son. The man we had called names is now gently removing his shoes and tossing them over to me. My mind races as I catch them. They are thick-soled boots. Put those on and make your way over here. All of the jellyfish floating there have deadly poison. Be careful. I take off my sandals and put my feet into his boots, just as he tells me to. The size doesn't fit at all, and they are way too big, but not so big I can't walk in them. I cautiously take a step and, confirming it's alright, take my second, then third steps towards him with my sandals in one hand. Thank you very much. You can thank me later. For now, don't look around. Just come toward me. I know my breathing is increasingly rough, and I get a little embarrassed. However, knowing some concessions will have to be made, I walk through the water and over the jellyfish. When I step on a jellyfish, I feel the squishing sensation through the shoes and shudder. There are shards of glass in the puddles, and that makes me want to thank Hyoshi-san for being considerate enough to lend me such strong shoes. I can walk the remaining meter. Hyoshi-san seems fairly close. Adjusting my breathing, I carefully take the remaining three steps. Ah. There is no mistake in my carelessness. I have overlooked the transparent jellyfish at my feet. Even though I can't see it, I can clearly feel it, and the baggy boots I am wearing throw off my balance. At this rate, I will end up on my butt. If I fall now, all the help I have received will be for nothing. Watch out! However, my body is supported by some strength that pulls me back. Yoshi-san's right hand has grabbed onto my left wrist. It was a close one. Just like that, I had been pulled out of the room with the broken tanks. As soon as I was out of danger, Hiyoshi gave me a mighty pull and shut the fire door. This is... In front of the souvenir stand. More importantly, why are you here? Hiyoshi-san studies me against the wall in front of the souvenir stand. The terror from a moment ago hasn't escaped through the heavy, dark gray emergency door. Isn't this... isn't this Mountain Aquarium? Besides, before I met up with you, Hiyoshi-san, I... there was... so much... Hiyoshi-san just stares at me in my flustered state. Um, I, uh... Alright, calm down, Mayu-chan. A wry grim appears on Hiyoshi-san's face, and he motions in front of the souvenir stand before sitting down. Today, I have nothing but bad memories in relation to the floor, so I merely lean against the wall. The gacha-gacha machines are still there, 
but the whole lineup is new, and I don't know a single one of the products. Well then, have you calmed down a bit? Yes, thank you very much, Yoshi-san. Yeah, I'm glad, and you can call me by my first name. I don't really care about who's older and who's younger. So these all say the exact same thing. <laughs> okay, I'll pick the bottom one. Um, what is it you know about this aquarium, Yoshi-san? Jeez, I told you they can call me by my given name. That wry grin appears again, but there's nothing I can do. I have some hesitation about actually calling an older guy by his given name, and I've only heard his name once, so I don't really remember it. After that, Hiyoshi-san makes a serious face. I think of him as a light-hearted person, but as his mouth straightens, his face seems very focused. Well, it's fine. At any rate, there's only one thing I know. This is Mountain Aquarium, but it is not Mountain Aquarium. It's not Mountain Aquarium? Something like that. I don't know the principle or the cause behind it, but this Mountain Aquarium is on a distinct time axis from the one you and I visited earlier. Mayu Shen, that's what I think. I can't think of it as anything else. A different time? Whether past or present, you could even call it a parallel world, Yoshi san adds. I can't understand what he is saying, not in the least. How do you know this, Yoshi-san? That is... Yoshi-san mumbles and snorts. He looks my way and smiles bitterly. Mayu-chan, didn't you meet any friends or acquaintances from long ago? Huh? On the contrary, you didn't see any staff or other customers, did you? His words seemed very enlightened. I couldn't think of a single thing. After all, I had just come from that experience firsthand. However, there was something that bothered me as well. Yoshi-san had said long ago. Mari, who hadn't changed since that day, but then why? I don't get it, that bit about long ago. Therefore, I rejected it. In doing so, I could affirm the fact that I had reunited with Mari. Is that so? It seems I said something a bit strange then. As he looks away and says it, I have no response for him. Staying like that for a moment, Yoshi-san says, By the way, and continues speaking, I think what caused the glass in the jellyfish tank to rupture was an expansion of gas from something within the tank. So the gas expanded and ruptured the tank from within? If we're thinking about the cause, right. Since there's no staff in a space-time distortion, then it's not strange for the oxygen modulator here to break down. Then it wasn't the work of Ghost? To my murmuring, he had no answer. Even if we have to force ourselves, we should think positively, right? For us to have come here and there to be ghosts is not something I can take. Can we get back to original time axis or something like it? We can get back, definitely. Hiyoshi-san asserts decisively, without looking me in the eye. Once again, he starts the next topic with a quick by the way. That girl that was with you, the one who seemed into the occult and stuff, what happened to her? You mean Himeno? Yeah, yeah, Himeno-chan. Weren't you together? I inflate my cheeks without thinking about it. When he notices, I become embarrassed and look down. I rest my hand on my knees, and moving them up and down, I say, I don't know. Ah, uh, you're a pretty easy read, Mayu-chan. Got into an argument, did you? It had nothing to do with you, Hiyoshi-san. Still, you do get that there is something foul about this aquarium, right? Mayu-chan, you experienced that yourself. At his words, a pang of pain surges through my chest. That room with the rotten corpses. The sudden cracking of the tank at the jellyfish booth. When I think that the same accidents could happen to Himeno, I instinctively leap up. Speaking honestly, I have no desire to see Himeno's face, but 
Knowing that the whole aquarium is dangerous, I can't calm down. What if imagining possibilities alone makes me want to cry? Wait a second, Mayu-san. You must be tired from all that's happened. Moving quicker than I do, Hiroshi-san's ho hand holds me back. I'll go look for Himeno-chan for you. I'm more knowledgeable about this place. You wait here. As he says this, Hiroshi-san gives a thumbs up. It was a mystery to me. We had only just met today and had an inconsequential conversation, so I wondered why he had come to rescue me. He was even showing concern for Himeno. He was supposedly a total stranger, so why? Um... Without hearing my response, he starts walking away from where the jellyfish booth was. His face and profile made me feel very reassured. So we say please to him or please wait, I'll go. Mm, I'll go. Please wait, I'll go. Somehow moving my heavy legs, I follow behind Hiyoshi-san. It would have been easier to leave to Hiyoshi-san. However, Himeno is my best friend. So I can't believe we had fought. That reality can't be changed, so I want to go get her. Since the, new, since the souvenir shop near the entrance, Hiroshi-san heads towards the closest tunnel tank. If Himeno is still in the building, then we need to look everywhere for her. I'm able to catch up with Hiroshi-san before he enters the tunnel. I'm going to. Huh? My Jen, I told you to wait there for me. I can't do that, because Himeno is my friend. On hearing what I said, Hiyoshi-san gives me a patronizing look while grinning at me. Looking into the tunnel from the outside, I realized it hadn't changed from the mountain aquarium I had seen earlier that day. Large fish like manta rays and sharks swim about. This is... the tunnel tank. If you two went in order earlier, then shouldn't we start with the first exhibit? I nod as what Hiyoshi-san said is right. He adds, right, and walks on. I notice something there and pull him back. Look, over there. I say as I point to an area nearby that's visible from the entrance. As the silhouette becomes clearer in close observation, I become frightened. Something hops freely from side to side. It bounces about the tunnel numerous times, then stops itself. After bouncing up and down on the floor several times, it ceases to move. Completely exhausted. Sounds like a fish. Straining my eyes from far away, huh, I can see that it is a fish. From what I can see from 10 meters away, it has sharp fangs and body as thin as a rail. That might be a cutlass fish. Hiroshi-san mutters says, having laid eyes on the same thing I had. Still... Fish are creatures that can hop up and down around like a room like that. <laughs> we should get a better look or head inside. Let's get a better look. Why not? <laughs> we should get a better look. It's probably going to kill us. <laughs> After waiting near the entrance for several seconds, a fish resembling a cutlass fish bounces around the tunnel, then flops down on the floor, causing the amount of fish corpses on the floor to increase. The gathering of numerous fish scales reflects the fluorescent light back like a kaleidoscope. Though it is the same as the fluorescent lighting, the light reflected back is vivid, putting the sensation of the scale's slipperiness in my mind. Ugh, that's pretty creepy. Hiroshi San's lip curl up in disgust as he grumbles. I also thought it was creepy, but compared to the rotten corpse I had seen earlier, that was as far back as I allowed my memory to go. Could that be... In contrast to Hiyoshi-san, who had averted his eyes, I just continued to stare and was able to pick up on something. Those fish hopping around, they're coming from below, from that place that looks like a vent. From the beginning of the tunnel, the fish hop up intermittently. It doesn't appear as though they are going to stop, with a new fish popping up after a fixed interval of time passes. The fish mechanically shoot out of the vent, ricochet about the tunnel at high speed, then finally, their vigor exhausted, die as they land in a pile on the floor. At the moment they fall, the fish's long, narrow bodies wriggle like snakes. They collide with the other fish as they cease moving, the next fish hopping to its death in the same manner. 
They are... They are. Good eye, Mario-chan. So many strange things have happened that I'm probably becoming used to them. Unable to bear these strange circumstances any longer, a self-deprecating smile reaches my lips as I give a light laugh. Whoa. At the same time as the fish leaps up, Yoshi-san takes a handkerchief from his pocket and tosses it into the giant cylinder. The fish pierces the handkerchief once as it dances in the air, then the fish passes through it a second and then a third time as it bounces repeatedly. In an instant, the fabric he tossed has become dust. On placing myself in the handkerchief's position, I subconsciously cover my neck. It shouldn't penetrate this. Himeno, not having a form should mean it isn't going through. A form, a dead body. I didn't want those words to pass my lips, but it was definitely as Yoshi-san had said. Maya-chan, you don't remember where you and Himeno-chan split up, do you? I look down and tilt my head to the side. I'm worried about Himeno. I can no longer make baseless statements like, Himeno is fine because she is Himeno. The reality is that if Yoshi-san hadn't rescued me, I'd no longer be in this world. There's no way I can let that happen to Himeno. I have to hurry and meet up with her, then find a safe place. Okay, well, we need to do a once-over of the building. Yoshi-san knocks on a panel that is to the left if you are looking in from the entrance. I hear it make a hollow sound before he pushes the panel in. Making a rattling sound, the panel opens. This isn't just a display, but also a door. In contrast to the nature reminiscent blue exhibit space before the door, a mechanical gray hallway stretches before us. The dim white fluorescent light flickers and fades on and off. Oh. Is this the staff passageway? Correct. When I came here when I came through here earlier, I saw some employees, so I was lucky I'd been left unlocked. Could the fact that the lights were on mean that someone just came through here? Even if they had, that person should be aware of all the unusual phenomena here. Anyway, if we go through this passage, we can circumvent the tunnel and look for Himeno Shan. Alright. Yoshi san walked ahead, taking several steps before I stepped in. I was hesitant about walking through the staff passageway without permission, but it was certainly better than going through the tunnel tank. Moreover, if we were able to come across a staff member, we might be able to gain some information about this Montan Aquarium. Big sister. The staff passageway is approximately 10 meters, just wide enough that people can barely pass each other. Walking up ahead of me, Yoshi-san's shoulder width is so great that I wouldn't be able to pass him unless he turned sideways. Even more than before, Yoshi-san seems stronger and more reliable than ever. Okay, Mario, let's just pull back a bit on the compliments. <laughs> Big sister. Huh? That voice that I thought was just in my head bore a silhouette the second time. It made me suspect that it was probably an optical illusion. Behind me, I was sure I had heard a nostalgic voice. What's up, Mayushan? Yoshi-san asked me without turning around. I squeak out that I'm fine and turn my attention to his back. Oh. Big sister. However, that was my confirmation. It was neither a visual nor auditory hallucination. The voice calling me. Mari's voice calling me big sister had definitely come from behind me. Mari! Unable to hold back, I let that name slide from my lips. The next moment, I wanted to see Mari so bad, I turned back. You can't, Mari chan! My eyes opened wide in surprise as Yoshi san plants himself firmly in front of me, arms spread wide. I had unconsciously backtracked to the passageway entrance, back to where we had started. Uh-huh. Suddenly going back, don't you remember where we came from? Where is Mari? I see. You moved without hesitation as if you had been called, so I thought that's what it might be. Calm down, Mario-chan. 
there was nobody there. Huh? But the voice. There is no voice, all right? Calm down. You have to calm down. His expression as he calls for me to calm down is frantic. A crease appears in his forehead as he strains his voice. I steady my breathing as I stand in fear of his threatening attitude. Breathing deeply, I keep my back against the wall of the corridor. As my determination rises, so does my body temperature. Listen, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Yoshi-san, I'm alright. Calm down. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> He's like saying, ow, what? Are, are you all right? Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> My words don't seem to be reaching Hiyoshi-san at all. His eyes open wide and his voice rings out. Like a broken DVD player, he cannot move past that one syllable. Hiyoshi-san? I back up instinctively. However, as if he's completely unaway unaware, Hiyoshi-san just keeps yelling in a strange voice. Um, Hiyoshi-san, please tell me you're okay, aren't you? Three meters away from Hiyoshi-san, I peer at him. He sways, his legs unstable, but he's definitely moving towards me. Huh? Ah! <laughs> Almost at the same time, the strange voice stops. He falls over on the spot. As if his power supply had been cut off, he suddenly tumbles to the ground. The sound of him flopping to the ground sends a chill down my spine. I'm not familiar with what you would call Ukemi, but I know the way he fell is dangerous. What is Ukemi? Um, are you injured? Sitting down, I extend a quivering hand. It's probably a bit rude to the person who saved me, but he would understand. For at this moment, the image of his strange behavior is seared into my mind. Is he epileptic, maybe? Even when I call out to him, there is no response. But if I strain my ears, I can hear shallow breathing. Thank goodness he's alive. That alone is enough to satisfy me. There is something I can rely on within this mysterious aquarium. What in the world was all that? Still having my doubts, I am, for the moment, relieved. What should I do? I can't just leave him unconscious and defenseless while I proceed further into the staff passageway. On the other hand, carrying someone an entire head taller than I am, than I am is impossible. Yoshi-san, please wake up. I call his name over and over, but he still doesn't respond. Ugh. I hesitate a bit, and then I touch his back. Ugh. Putting all of my strength into it, I'm able to roll him onto his back. His body is now facing up with his eyes closed. His chest goes up, then down, to form a breath. Hiyoshi-san! I can't make the distinction between whether he is just asleep or has passed out. I have never seen someone who has lost consciousness. I take deep breaths to keep myself from giving way to panic. Other than the sound of Hiyoshi-san's breathing, the sounds of machines running echo. Sometimes I can hear the sound of my own breathing. I'm alone. My awareness of the situation quickly turns to anxiety. I am all alone inside this incomprehensible mountain aquarium. The only other existence I can rely on, Hiyoshi-san, currently has his eyes closed. Hiyoshi-san, please wake up. Growing impatient, I shake his shoulders. He doesn't even moan, and his lack of a reaction only increases my anxiety, so I call his name in a louder voice. Whether or not my voice reaches him, his eyes flutter open, and closer expansion, he has distinct double eyelids. What? Thank goodness you're awake. Huh? What? Are you... Looking down on me, too? Yoshi-san, what? Uh, I'm not Kenobi and Mayumi. I'm not looking down on you or anything like that. You do! What is going on? Screaming, he grabs my left ankle as I squat next to him. 
His strength is unthinkable compared to his gentle demeanor from only moments ago. His rough hand dig into my soft skin. Terror rages within my heart at his first brush with a man's real power. Please, stop. Whenever he seems to be losing his grip on my leg, he tightens it more. Every time I verbalize my pain, his grip intensifies a little further. My concern for him is gone. Only the feeling of his rejection remains. You little... I realize that little by little, he's pulling me closer to him. He really is that strong. I haven't done anything. Ow! Hyoshi-san! Gripping my ankle tightly, Hyoshi-san pulls himself up little by little. His chest is huge and the muscles in his arms bulge and form a mountain shape. His face lacks the appearance of sanity and his eyes are looking in different directions. They roll without end seeming as if they will go completely white. Though I intended to put a distance between us, I am unable to do so. As if coaxed, I am pulled closer to him. No. Rejected. I'm being rejected. The ones doing it. Are you all? No. While standing himself up, he sluggishly lifts his left hand. His fingers point to my direction. There is no mistaking his intent to grab me with both hands. I'm filled with desire to be free from him. Ooh. I... I shake off his right hand. I have to get his hand loose. As I try to loosen the hand clutching my leg, he frantically pushes me off. As if pushing against a rock, his hand remains unperturbed. No way. Even giving those words for him can't change reality. No good. <sighs> As he lets out a groan, Hyoshi-san's left hand reaches for me. His movements are slow, but his fingers are moving in my direction. Hurry. I have to hurry and get him off me. As before, Hyoshi-san's hand won't move. It has an uncanny strength. Even trying to loosen his fingers one by one, my strength is no match for his. What should I do? Then I realize I'm concentrating too hard on my left leg. He has latched onto my right leg with that same strength. What? Having grabbed onto both of my legs, I have no room to put up a fight and I'm pulled in closer to him. His bloodshot face appears right before my eyes. His pupils are split in opposite directions, much like a fish's eyes. So, very well, you all will... What comes from Hyoshi-san's mouth are not words. Without realizing it, I've stopped listening to him. Ow. He is definitely- he, What? He is definitely splitting apart my legs with all his strength. An intense pain shoots through me as if my leg is being torn off at the hip. Even as I try to escape, my legs will not move at all. On account of him lifting me by my legs, my torso goes limp as if hanging in midair. No, Hyoshi-san. The stench is... Herka? Miki? Either one is fine. Ooh. My words suddenly no longer reach him. But that is for the best. I can no longer hear his words either. When I open my eyes, Hyoshi-san is no longer there. Moreover, I no longer care about him. Losing consciousness was surely to prevent my mind from going all to pieces. Really, what a useless effort. Seeing as how my body has already gone all to pieces. The Tragedy of Helplessness We died yet again. God damn it. How can a human being tear me in half? Okay. Well, we'll decide to not do that next time. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next part. See you later.